we reported earlier, the International Religious Freedom Summit began right here in the nation's capital today. Among the speakers is a lawyer who exposed a forced abortions program in his native China and spent four years in prison. Chen Guanchang fled to the U.S. Embassy in Beijing back in 2012. Last month, he became an American citizen. He continues to speak out about human rights abuses in communist China, saying the government's Communist Party or Com Party is using violence to maintain control. And he says he hopes the United States will stand by the people of his native country. Chen Guanchang is a human rights advocate and distinguished fellow at the Center for Human Rights at the Catholic University of America. He is joined now by William Saunders, director of the Center for Human Rights at Catholic University. Gentlemen, great to be with you both. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Guan Chen, I'd like to start with you. I understand you recently said uh, the human rights situation in China is becoming worse and worse. Uh, I'd yeah. like for you to talk a little bit more about that and what is happening over there and also if you could briefly tell us your experience okay yeah uh, of course the Khan party now prosecuted the Chinese uh, people a lot you can see in Hong Kong yeah the, the Khan party destroyed the individuals uh, a judiciary and now they tried to destroy the, the freedom media system now so in mainland China, you know, because the Khan Party tried to use the recognize, uh, facial recognizing system to control the people, now the people have to stay their state or their uh, city or their village. So the Khan Party said, oh, because the virus, so you, you have to keep there. The Khan Party continue to use the situation to control the people. In fact, that is surveillance. All the people, have to listen to the Khan Party. If you, if you go outside, the Khan Party will use force way to punish you. Mm. And um, Professor Saunders, I'd like to talk to you. Tell us how you got to know uh, Guan Chen and also his work exposing the forced abortions over there in China and also letting people know um, he's also known as the barefoot lawyer. Explain that to us. Yes, it's, it's, his story is unbelievable, except guess what? It's true. Uh, so he is a uh, democracy advocate. He's blind. He escaped from 24-hour surveillance by the CCP in his village in an amazing story by himself. So he has, he's a determined foe of the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And when he was young, he um, learned about the law, although uh, they didn't let uh, him be an official lawyer because he was handicapped. But people came to him and asked his advice. And one thing he did was he exposed the one-child policy and all the forced abortions. He and a colleague of his published it on the Internet. So after that, there was a, a show trial, and they put him in prison for four years. In fact, they accused him uh, of being responsible for 90,000 unwanted births. Think about it. Wouldn't you like to have it on your tombstone? You're responsible for 90,000 people being alive. So they, uh, so they put him in prison for that. And uh, as I said, when he got out, they put him under house arrest. They harassed him and harassed his family. But in a miraculous uh, escape, he got to the U.S. Embassy and eventually came to the USA. Oh, such an incredible story. And you continue your work. Um, I also want to talk to Guan Chen about mm -hmm. something that you had mentioned uh, about the Biden administration mm -hmm. wanting it to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, you, can you talk to us a little bit about that? And then also, um, you've also been speaking about, about the anniversary of the Communist Party in China. Yes, I think, yeah, the, the U.S. administration should stand up with another uh, democratic countries to ask the Khan Party uh, show what's happening about the virus. And uh, from the result, the nations should punish the created who May, uh, who created the coronavirus to make the whole world trouble, I think. Yeah, and uh, uh, that, that is very important, I think. If we ignore that, the coronavirus will happen again, not just when maybe later we are much more dangerous than this.
Absolutely. And one thing he says is that the Communist Party is a threat to the whole world, not just to the Chinese people, but also to the whole world, including America, as we see with the COVID uh, pandemic. Yes, yes. The Communist Party is not just uh, persecuted Chinese people. Uh, they are threatening the whole world now. Yeah, you can see the coronavirus make uh, U.S. Uh, people die a lot, much, much more than Pearl Harbor, right? So I think the U.S. Uh, administration should stand up with another country to punish the current party. Yeah, if we ignore that, the coronavirus will happen more and more. I got some information from the communist military, some uh, professional. They talk about the coronavirus. Uh, 2017, they said that they make different virus together. So that will very, very po poison. So they will make it a bio weapon to against the U.S. I, I have the video. And, and, you know, I know that both of you are going to be talking about this and more at the IRF Summit. Quickly, Professor, tell us why you feel that's important. It's very important because China is a great persecutor of religions, all religions. Their aim is to have the Communist Party kind of replace religions. So Christians are persecuted, Buddhists are persecuted, Muslims are persecuted, Falun Gong are persecuted. I mean, they're the Uyghur concentration camps, the Tibetan Buddhists, they drove out the Dalai Lama and took over the country and, and the churches, Catholic churches. They knocked down uh, crosses. They, you have, they have pictures of Chairman Xi at the front of the church. They read from his sayings. You have to sing songs about him. So they're trying to crush Christianity, trying to crush Islam, they're trying to crush Buddhism, they're trying to crush the Falun Gong. So they are a pretty vicious persecutor of religious freedom. So this summit and what we're going to speak about today is to talk about uh, how religious freedom is being abused in China. The summit itself looks at religious freedom in the whole world. As we know, John Paul II said religious freedom is the first freedom. So it's, it's first, it's most important. A country that doesn't recognize that does not respect human rights. So true. And gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. We're very grateful, and, and God bless you both uh, for what you do. God bless thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>